All right, so this video right here is for all my risk takers. All right, those of you who just love a good thrill, live life on the edge. Yeah, 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 yeah. People like me, we watch you from afar. You know what I mean? We enjoy it. We think it's super dope, but we ain't trying that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this one here is for my risk takers, bro. What would a trip to the Mariana Trench be like? All right, shout out to Brightside because they finna break it all down. So if you knew, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and join us while we check this out. Here we go. Hey, have you ever wanted to take a dive into the deepest parts of the ocean? <laughs> no. Well, today you're gonna have no. <laughs> and I know a lot of y'all shaking y'all head just like me. We know what's down. Well, we don't know what's down there but we know what's down there. And no thank you. You can dive into the deepest parts of the ocean. Well, today, you're gonna have this opportunity. Now, how good are you at holding your breath? Not that good? Well, not to worry. Hop aboard my submersible craft and join me in the voyage to the depths. Ready? Ooh, let's dive. Right now, just below the surface, you see that life is thriving here. Fish and marine animals abound, and hey there, swimmers are waving at us. But we won't be staying here for long. Bye bye At 65 feet, there's a whole new world opening before your eyes. Shallow coral reefs are standing beautifully not far from the shore. And hey, there are people here again. It's scuba divers this time, though. What a pressure. I didn't know scuba divers can go that low. 130 feet deep? I didn't know they could go that low. I didn't I, see you learned something right there, bro. Not saying I would, but that, that hey, that was some new information for me there. Hey, there are people here again. It's scuba divers this time, though. Water pressure isn't kind to divers without special equipment. 130 feet is the depths where we say goodbye even to recreational scuba divers. It's the maximum allowed for them. Take care, guys. 200 feet, and here's the first orca. These whales inhabit the relatively shallow waters of almost every sea and ocean in the world. Did you know that they're the apex predators, by the way? It means they have no natural enemies, and no one can take them down. At 230 feet, we meet whale sharks, the largest known fish species, weighing up to 60 tons. And they're also quite long livers. Well, yeah, I guess their livers are long at that. But actually, it's about their life expectancy. They can live about 130 years. Wow. <laughs> Didn't know that either. And also, have you noticed all the little fish you saw swimming by are gone? They're gone. <laughs> now, look outside. If you're a scuba diver, it's a real pro. Because at 330 feet, they'll have to be very cautious not to get decompression sickness. It occurs if you rise too quickly to the surface. And if you're lucky, you can also see a giant Pacific octopus. It dwells in cool water starting this deep and going down as far as 6,600 feet. And now we're entering the dark part of the ocean. At 490 feet, just 1% of the light from the surface reaches us. All the rest is absorbed by water. Everything that's deeper will get darker and darker still. Oh look! At about 660 feet, there's a giant oar fish circling our submersible. These creatures are believed to be the source of all sea serpent sightings and also a lot of alliteration. Sometimes they swim up to the surface and freak out sailors and swimmers. No wonder. These fish can reach 36 feet in length, enough to scare the heck out of me, for example. Okay, now we're at 980 feet. And wait, what's that huge and gangling thing out there? Oh, I get it. It's a Japanese spider crab. Why a spider, you ask? Well, just look at those legs and the answer will come to you without further prompts. By the way, there's almost nothing more to them than legs. The body of such a crab is normally just one and a half feet across. Going deeper now, and at 1,640 feet, you're going to see the last of the blue whales. No, not really the last of them. I mean, that's the deepest they can swim. They don't really need to dive that deep for food, which they have in abundance in shallower waters, but they still can. I guess it's- So my question is, how do they know, like, you know what I mean? How do they know? 
Is there just some innate sensibility for them just to know? Or what in their bodies lets them know or triggers them if they go too low? That's what I want to know. Which they have in abundance in shallower waters, but they still can. I guess it's just for the sake of showing how awesome they are. After all, they're the largest creatures in the history of Earth, both in the sea and on land. Shh, you hear this? These are the sounds fin whales are making to talk to their friends many miles away. They can do this thanks to the SOFAR channel, or deep sea channel, that generally starts at 1,970 feet, but can vary in depth. It's a layer of water where the speed of sound is at its minimum and sound waves can go thousands of miles before disappearing. At the depth of 2,723 feet, we have reached the point where the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, would not even show its tip on the surface if it were put underwater. Now we're entering the really interesting part of the ocean, where no sunlight reaches us and strange creatures dwell. One of those is the giant squid, yes, that legendary type. It inhabits the depths of 2,950 feet. Just imagine the creature with eyes the size of frisbees. Sperm whale. And you won't see them coming. It's too dark down there. Males hunt down these beasts, but they certainly can fight back. What a sight it would be to see such an encounter. And that's where pitch darkness finally falls on us. The midnight zone. The pressure here is so huge that if you somehow end up being here without a submersible, well, you'll simply be crushed in a couple of seconds. And that without seeing a thing too. Mm, not the best of prospects. Anyway, at 3,600 feet, there's West Mata, one of the deepest ocean volcanoes in the world. Its last eruption was in 2009, and it was even filmed by a remotely operated vehicle. 4,200 feet down below and we see the ferocious great white sharks. These ultimate predators feel great at such a depth. Their eyesight is rather poor and they navigate by scent, so they really don't need sunlight to hunt down their prey. I don't see you, but I'll still eat you. <laughs> also, the leatherback turtles, the largest turtles in the world, dive at the same depth. I wonder if they do it to tease the great whites. Oh, see those huge nets? That's because we're now at the depth of 4,900 feet where the catch-all fishing method is used. The nets are here to be dragged along the ocean floor, catching everything unfortunate enough to be caught. I'll let you decide how detrimental this is to the ocean life here. At 6,000 feet, if we were in the Grand Canyon, we'd be sitting at its lowest and deepest point. Imagine that all the crevasses have been thoroughly filled with water, and you'll get the perfect picture. Now, if we're really careful, then, at the depth of 6,600 feet, we'll be able to see the black dragonfish, a nightmarish creature that dwells in the deep and dark parts of the ocean. And trust me, it's better off staying right here. It looks like something from a horror movie, and I'd rather it never cross my path. Yeah, its color looks like it's never been in any type of light. You know what I'm saying? It's never seen the sunlight. Look at the color of it. It looks like something from a horror movie, yes. and I'd rather it never cross my path. At 7,400 feet, we'll be saying goodbye to sperm whales. This is the deepest point they can dive, and frankly, they have no real business at such a depth. Maybe they hunt the black dragonfish, of course, or it hunts them? Nah, the difference in size is too big. Sperm whales can reach 62 feet in length, which makes them the largest toothed whales in the world. Not many creatures can counter that. It's good that our submersible has a powerful floodlight. Without it, we wouldn't have been able to see the astonishing beauty of the deep-sea coral reefs located at the depth of 9,900 feet. They can be found in every ocean, and it's a pity they can't be seen without special deep-sea diving equipment. Okay, going deeper still, and at 12,100 feet, we reach the average depth of the world ocean. From now on, the journey into the real depths begins. The general ocean floor has been passed, so now it's time to delve into the abyss. I won't tell you not to be afraid because the scariest creatures of the deep dwell here, below the midnight zone. And it doesn't end there. The pressure on the upper limit of the abyss, at 13,100 feet, 
is like a whole regiment of elephants stomping on you. Not that you'd have- And maybe that's keeping some of the things we haven't seen down. And it keeps those that can't go down that far up. I think that pressure is the reason why we haven't seen some of the things we may be looking for, i.e. a megalodon or anything else that you may have heard about in history books or, or you know what I mean, history lessons and, and you're, you're trying to keep an eye out to see if it's truly extinct. I think that pressure barrier has something to do with that. 100 feet. It's like a whole regiment of elephants stomping on you. Not that you'd have the time to feel it, though. Now, at 15,000 feet, the monsters out of your worst nightmares pop up. Anglerfish, for example, will scare the heck out of anyone. Its long and crooked teeth, along with a growth on its head that lures the prey, is enough to instill fear even in the bravest. But perhaps even more terrible is the creature called the Black Swallower. It's an eel-like beast that has a very stretchy stomach, and it can swallow prey that's twice its size. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'd rather switch off the lights not to see anything this deep in the ocean. <laughs> what? You want to see it all? Hey, that makes perfect sense, though. That would be me. If I was to somehow survive the, the pressure and get down there and be in some type of thing and get pushed out of it, just let me be in the dark. I just don't even want to see it coming, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just don't want to see it coming. Because you know ain't nothing down there nice or good. Switch off the lights not to see anything this deep in the ocean. What? You want to see it all? All right, if you insist. Cut them off. Cut them off. Cut them off. Cut them off. <laughs> Look down below and you're going to see the deepest shipwreck ever found, SS Rio Grande in the South Atlantic sunk in 1941 and went as low as 18,900 feet. No wonder it was only found 55 years later. And now the deepest and darkest part of the ocean begins. We're diving into the Mariana Trench. Officially it begins at about 19,700 feet deep. It's both the least explored and the most fascinating area for the scientists and adventurers alike. What lies at the bottom of it? Well, we're about to see, but while we're not there yet, I'll show you something else. For example, here's the deepest fish ever found. It's called a snailfish, and it dwells at 26,000 feet. Its body is translucent, so you can actually see right through its skin. Well, I must say I'm glad we didn't turn off the lights after all. This little guy is surprisingly cute for a creature that can withstand such pressure. Going lower and deeper, you won't see any other kind of fish or vertebrate animal whatsoever. The pressure is just too much for such creatures. But there are shrimps and other invertebrates, not to mention microbes, that can dwell even in the deepest part of the ocean. And that part is the Challenger Deep. It's the bottom of the Mariana Trench and its depth is 35,853 feet. Yes, we've arrived at the very bottom of the Earth. Few people have been here, and very little is known about it yet. But scientists aren't going to stop, and there's hope we'll soon find out what secrets the depths of the ocean hold. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it. And then my thing is, are we sure? Are we positive? And I don't think we can be. So, you know what I mean? I don't think it's an answer to that question, but what is the, the deepest point of the ocean? We don't know. I think that's what we found so far. I'll put it that way. But I think it gets deeper. And that's just me. You know what I mean? I think it gets deeper and we'll start to discover more and more different uh, creatures at those depths. You know what I mean? Maybe even something that we didn't even know was there. And now we know and we wish we didn't know. I think we're going to find something like that sooner or later. But this is what a trip would be like down the Mariana Trench, man. Any y'all interested? Risk takers? Anybody? Any volunteers? Y'all let me know. Get at me in the comment section, man. And y'all stay around and stay tuned. It's your boy L. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.